Hello and welcome to Halo RV, everybody. My name is Josh, the RV nerd, and we are kicking off our new for 22 Montana high country here. The 281 CK, as you're seeing, just over 11,000 pounds. And if you look at this and you say, eh, it looks like the same thing they had last year, just different decals, you are very mistaken. They have made some easy to miss but very important content updates i believe first and foremost let's talk about the fact that these are now riding on g-rated saloon tires like some of the bigger boys uh did they're giving you the same tires on these because despite the fact that this is the smallest uh and i think the lightest of all the montanas they want to make sure you had the exact same road safety here another major update for some people that previously i think was a make or break deal point for some people was that no more cable slides all the Montanas, not just the full Monty, but these uh, the smaller high countries like we're looking at, they are all now uh, using rack and pinion slides on their bigger heavy slides. You may still see some uh, Schwintech slides on the smaller like bedroom slides, but that works perfectly fine on those smaller lightweight slides. They have upgraded the air conditioning system. It's still the same 30,000 BTU power, but they've revised things and redone some ductwork so that it provides um, more cubic foot of airflow into the RV while you're using it than ever before with less noise. And speaking of that, they've even enhanced the water pump. How many people when you're watching an RV video talk to you about the water pump? One of the things I love most about Montana is how incredibly in tune they are with their owners. I try to cyber stalk as many like RV owners groups and forums as I possibly can. And in every Montana forum, I see the guy who actually designs these just sitting there in the weeds, soaking up all the consumer information. So if you wonder sometimes, man, do they even listen to this? Well, the Montana guy does, but maybe that's why they've been the, the absolute number one uh, selling luxury fifth wheel for like, I, I don't know, 20, 24 years, some crazy number like that. And he, one of uh, the people in one of the forums said one time they replaced their water pump and found one that was 12 decibels quieter. And he goes, what now? I like that. So guess what? These now have a water pump that is 12 decibels quieter. You want to talk about a consumer driven product? Boom, Montana, baby. Now this layout is, uh, scientifically speaking, uh, crazy bananas is the best way I can describe it here. It is unlike anything I've ever seen. Like most of the time when you see a layout from one manufacturer, it's like everybody builds a version of it, right? Nothing is unique. Then Montana comes up with this thing and it's got a couple things that like you're either going to be like oh this is the best i've ever seen or you're like this is a complete failure there seems to be really no in between on this one and either way whether you love it or you don't like it i don't care leave me some feedback i'd love to know just what you think there's two major uh points of concern down here for some folks let's get those out of the way and if you appreciate that we go ahead and hit this stuff head on yeah you know leave me a little comment say hey thanks you saved me some trouble the rear wall looks blank but with the slides closing almost dead on the rear wall, there's not a whole lot you could do here. And I like the idea of maybe like a little flip up table or something right there, but it would kind of interfere potentially with TV viewing from the Shays Lounge over here. Um, now with the, the light just pouring in over here, we're not getting a good look at like the, the color pattern on that seating. So let me go ahead and blot out the sun with those roller nightshades that we have at this and give you a little clearer view of what it looks like here. Plus. Just for size reference, you see me hanging out over there in this thing like Burt Reynolds doing his centerfold spread. <laughs> oh, oh. Now that image is going to be burned into my memory for the rest of the day. We'll see if I can drink that thing to sleep. But you get the idea. Now, why did they do this? They purposely built this floor plan to be shorter, uh, lighter, you know, more compact. And when they did that, they had to do some atypical things because like a traditional theater seat and or like and a dinette, they don't they don't fit there. So you might be wondering, where do I eat? Don't get too far ahead of me. You see that extension on the countertop there? We'll get to that in just a second. Now, I also want to head this off at the pass. You might be going, OK, fine. But whether uh, can, can I get something else in there? And the answer to that is no, <laughs> no, you cannot. This is what they offer on this. Now, there's nothing that says you have to leave it there or uh, throw this idea at you there. You could uh, always get an RV like this and you can say, hey, listen, when I come to pick that thing up, I got no use for that. Can you guys just take it out? Yes, absolutely. We can do stuff like that. Sometimes when it comes down to what I call screwdriver work, don't let that get you hung up too much. If there's something small like that that could be, uh, you know, pulled in or put in or pulled out, that's easy. Like some people said, I'd like a theater seat here, then maybe I'll put like a little desk or something. No problem, just Montana doesn't do that. 
Because RV production is like a cookie cutter. They punch the cookie out the same way every time. Now you might be able to add a peanut or sprinkle to it, but you can't change the cookie. And this is part of the cookie. Better look at these shades right here. The sun was just really effective. I, I was like, you know, if we're gonna do this, I want you to get to see at least what it looks like. And you get the idea. You've got awesome window coverage on this. And as long as we're looking over here, I wanna take a look at this. Because when you look at this on camera, the slide out reads like carpet. But that is not, actually. If I get right up close here, what you see is, is actually like, um, uh, it's like a vinyl type material. It's the same kind of stuff that you find like on the deck of a pontoon. So if you happen to spill a drink or something on it, obviously you don't want to just like not clean it up, but it's not going to screw up your flooring. Now let's talk air conditioning, guys, because this is one of the other, uh, <laughs> I would say, silent updates that they did because they actually found a way with the same 30,000 BTU air system to get you more air blowing into the cabin of the RV with less noise, which is cool. And then if you look at this, you're like, why does that look so weird? They actually set this up so that it uses like a residential air filter system on these now. So you can get better air filtration, you can get better airflow, and you can get less noise all in one. And uh, that is a, a pretty awesome one, two, three type combo. What I also like about this is there's an interesting, really effective, clear definition of like living room versus kitchen, which is kind of hard to accomplish in a smaller RV. And I think it's the way that this entire entertainment center is just sort of tucked into the slide out over here. Now I wanna put you in the driver's seat. Like if you're over here in the chaise lounge area with your legs extended, this is what it's gonna look like over here. There have been some people who just from pictures or uh, video, will say, yeah, but if I'm all the way over on the other side of the sofa, that kitchen's in my face and I can't see the TV. And no, that that is uh, that is not the case at all. If you're all the way over here on the, the very furthest part of the sofa, there's still not a bad seat in the house of this thing. Now down below, this is one of, uh, well, really three electrical heating elements in this RV. You have a 5,000 BTU space heater the air conditioner above us has a 16,000 BTU heat pump in it, uh, technically 16.5, plus the RV has 12 volt tank heaters on every single tank. It also has a, uh, you know, a normal propane furnace. You, in a sense, have two heating systems that if you really want to get cold, you can run simultaneously and, and get through that cold weather. Well, I guess that wouldn't be getting you cold. It would be if you want to get, in the, you know what I mean, right? I, like, I'm an idiot, but you know what I mean, right? But frankly, the uh, the secret hero of this RV is some insane storage capacity. Like, you you see how there's storage on either side or like even behind where the TV is mounted? You could easily add some shelving into that if you wanted to. Um, this is like about 18 inches deep. Let me get you on an angle so you can see some three dimensions in there. And then over here, this is just like a full-on pantry-tainment center. You've got... I, you know, I think that's really going to be your primary pantry right there, or at least it could be, except when we get over here into the kitchen, you see that this thing just has an insane amount of upper kitchen cabinet space. And if you're looking, this is like the exact same kitchen that they use in their front living high country. It's got this wraparound U-shape, just tons of cabinet space all around you, big giant microwave right there, um, all sorts of prep space. That's one of the things I love about this one so, so much. And again, it all wraps around you, but you don't really feel like you're getting trapped in the kitchen because it's wide enough over here. If you do need to have two people standing inside the little alcove, you don't feel like you're tripping over one another. And what makes this kitchen work for me is the fact that like this part of the kitchen is not in a slide out. That allows them to really maximize the storage capacity by giving us bigger spaces. You know, they have more room to work with. It's easier. I love that big giant sink right there. And a kitchen, what, what is it? I don't know what it is. Having a window overlooking a sink like that, I love it. I really, really like that myself. But because they didn't have to jam this into a slide out, they were able to give us all that extra cabinet space. Now, yeah, you're definitely going to need, you know, like a two or three stepper to get up there but at least it's storage. It's not wasted space. You can always do something with it. And have you been paying attention to how many outlets are around this thing? And as you start looking at the outlets, as we move around the RV, start taking note of the ones that have like a yellow sticker on them because though 
those are pre-wired uh, to an inverter loop. So should you choose to add an inverter to this RV or get one of the more advanced solar packages that actually has a factory inverter, those outlets could be live uh, just off battery power. Now keep in mind, when you do that, you, you, you tax the batteries. You know, when you're going to run big power off of a small power source, it depletes it more quickly, but it does give you that capacity. I want to kind of step back here, give you a little, you saw my hat right there. It was 50 degrees this morning. It's like 75 now, which I'm thankful for, but it also means that I overdressed and I am a sweaty Betty currently. Now, uh, I posed the question earlier, sure, but where do I eat? That's what this is really uh, designed for, is that little kitchen dining bar area right there. And again, I acknowledge this is not going to work for everybody. This is not the, the only fifth wheel you ever need to consider or anything silly like that. It's, it's definitely a solo or like couples kind of rig. We have some decent guest capacity over here. We can entertain some friends. Personally, I think a little uh, a, a little folding table that you could bring out if need be to put in front of that long sofa, if you're going to spend some extra time in here, I think that, that could be a pretty viable option. There's one of those inverted outlets on the side of that fridge right next to the sofa. And you see USB outlets all over the place. Anywhere that you're going to sit or sleep, Keystone's really good about that. And did you notice that backsplash? How it actually wraps around the kitchen. It's not just located in the 18 inches that happen to be located where the uh, the stove top or whatever is. I would really love it if more manufacturers would take note and start doing that. Although I think Montana would like it if they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> now up top here, you have one of those uh, like rain sensing max air vent fans. You'll see another one of those in the bathroom. Interestingly, the one in the kitchen is standard. The one in the bathroom is optional. Um, don't, you know, ask me why they decided that. I'm kind of surprised at this level of fifth wheel they would make something like that optional, but I'm not the guy that designs these things, so I don't know, you know? <laughs> um, on the way upstairs, this is uh, one of the very few Montanas that has this upper deck. This and the 295 actually share the exact same upper deck. And it's another one of those areas you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. There's not going to be uh, a lot of in between on this one. And I'm not really sure where I want to start. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's buck my normal trends. Let's start up here in the bedroom instead of always doing the bathroom in the bedroom. We're going to shake things up today, guys. <laughs> like, you know, a really big deal, right? New for 22, just like full Monty Montana. You see those uh, elevated stands where you're not going to bash your head on them, but if you need a little extra shelf to set your phone, you, ha uh, you have one. Now, this floor plan and the 295, they happen to have that extra little stand there, which is super CPAP friendly. But most of the time, the side of your uh, slide out is going to look like that. Now, uh, where the side of the, or like the slide side right here, where it faces the outside, you'll have a breeze window. The other side of this bed does not have an opposing breeze window because of um, the, uh, the, the the closet in the bathroom. And I wanted to show you, you do have household outlets actually built into the slide box up there at the top, each of those corners. So again, if you need to make that a little handy phone charger station, it's perfect. We have a six and a half foot tall, fully easily walkable deck up here. Standard second 15,000 BTU air conditioner with the exact same treatment as what you have downstairs in the living room. 60 by 80 queen standard king bed optional in these 70 by 80 and taking a look at the storage down there you can see how that's uh you know easy lift handy little storage chest but then we get to the front here and i'm not saying it's a perfect fit but every time i look at this i look at that and i go "Ooh, that is dangerously close to being a desk so in its default configuration here, you have that windshield making everything look bigger, but obviously you have the privacy blackout shade to blot out the sun if, you know, you don't want to give the neighbors a free show. Depending on where you're camping, perhaps that's encouraged. I don't know. Um, <laughs> the uh, uh, Both sides of this do have uh, kind of like their own individual hanging closets. In case you're curious what this neon bag that grabs your attention is, that's the central vacuum uh, components right there. But it's this central dresser section that I think you could do some interesting things here with. And here, here's what I mean by this. Just to kind of give you, you know, a uh, 6'3", 200 pound dude size look at this thing right here. In my mind, I'm kind of using the bed as a chair, which frankly would probably be squishier and more comfy. 
Um, and uh, it would it would probably help my posture because you have to sit upright on one of these. Now this is a little far away. So what I kind of thought is like, if you're gonna turn this into an office, if you remove this door and you create like a, a flip up right here, this could be an awesome little mobile work camping desk space. You could blot the sun out, you could close the door, you could have total privacy in here. Everything would be nice and quiet. You could have yourself like your little wireless printer up here. You've got plugs for whatever devices or phones or chargers or anything like that you need. I'm not saying it's out of the box a perfect situation. I'm saying that for very little money and very little effort and frankly not something that is really hard to accomplish even for an idiot like me who sucks with tools. I think I could create a functional workspace right here using basically just uh, like a, a, a kitchen countertop flip up extension could make this your little keyboard stand. You got a little workspace over here. I don't know. I think it could work. Am I, I, I always ask, am I crazy? And that's like, that's like a slow pitch. It's low hanging fruit. Am I, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Am I on something here or am I just stupid? <laughs> Okay, so work camping station aside, uh, our TV hookups are located between the windows right there and the power outlets you see up on the ceiling, that is one of those inverted outlets that you'll find in this RV right here. And then of course, across from the bed, nice uh, door side viewing window. And if we uh, open that up and take a look, you see there's a very solid uh, dresser space in this one right here. Just enough room for your crack socks and undies, y'all. <laughs> And the big drawer on the bottom actually kind of nice for your like heavier if you got jeans or sweatshirts or beach towels that fold up into a lot of space right there. Now, this is again one of only two Montanas that has this dual entry bathroom right here because again, the whole point of this floor plan was to see how small can we make a Montana that still feels and functions like a Montana. Now, being fluffy friendly in the bathroom is obviously something they do well. This floor plan is no exception. And up top here, again, that is the optional XL vent fan, the rain sensor vent fan you see right there. Amazingly, in a high country, that is optional. The little four-inch fart fan, that is actually the standard thing in here. Short of me forgetting to check a box on a build sheet, though, that's what you're going to find on our high countries every single time. And then once again, with that six and a half foot height through the entirety of the upper deck, Excellent shower head ribbon here. That is absolutely not a concern in one of these. And taking a little bit of a page out of Cougar's book, going with a clear shower door makes the whole thing look and feel bigger. And it makes it easier to showcase a little corner seating area in there as well. Um, over here, they did, I think, a really good job bringing us some functional storage space into this bathroom area. Uh, actually, the way that this works when you're in it, I think is uh, I, really smart and effective, frankly. Beginning right up top here, you may have wondered so far, okay, if they gave us that windshield in the front and you have the two small closets, where's my washer dryer, guys? And that's this right here. That is either extra closet space or a uh, combo washer dryer slot right there. They did a, I think, really nice job kind of packaging that up. And it's interesting, it's actually all part of one slide that goes up through the master bedroom into the bathroom there. And then if they, they do the same kitchen range, or nope, not kitchen, you idiot. Nobody wants to be eating their dinner in here. What is wrong with me? And, you know, I fear the answer to that question is so many things. Now, there is one funny irony about this trailer. You think, oh, man, I, I love the idea of, like, a, a, a Montana with all those nice Montana features. But... The trick is to kind of smash all of that down for traveling. It gets a little trickier. Like you see, I mean, you know, the way that the slides all interlace with everything is, is kind of interesting. But, you know, you have to kind of walk in the bathroom and then you have to close the door. But you can do that if you need to get to the toilet in transit. The question really becomes what happens when we go downstairs. And the short answer is not much. <laughs> Unfortunately, the... This one's greatest asset is also its greatest liability. To get the RV short enough to get it down to like 32 feet and change, whereas all the other Montanas are typically 35 and up, it does limit our travel access. I suppose you could theoretically reach around the corner here like I just did if you have long arms and maybe access something. I am not at all going to say, though, that that qualifies as, like, viable travel access. 
If being able to get to the refrigerator in transit is a critical item for you, this may not be the right floor plan. If you go just slightly bigger though and look at the 295 where you're living, that one does regain access to the fridge. But again, you gotta be two foot longer to do that. Now I know you already kind of saw it with our floor plan and a flash quick footage at the start of this video, but I feel this reveal can only be properly expressed with the final countdown. That looks awesome. That looks awesome. And I like how it is easily distinguishable from what I like to call the full Monty, the big Montana. And you know what's funny? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, what, 32, 33 feet, something like that. It's, it's not like it's a 24-foot ultralight. But for a fifth wheel, it's kind of funny. It's kind of stubby. But it still has that really good look about it. And I love the fact that even though it's, it's an abbreviated slide down there in the living room, you know, the refrigerator sofa area there, the lounger, they still put an awning on it. And think about this. We're 32, 33 feet long, tip to tail. Almost all of that is awning space. <laughs> and they both are easy tilt. They're both power, of course. Uh, they both have LED lighting and all those fancy trimmings. I love what they did there. I think that is just an absolutely awesome feature. Something else I really like that is easy to miss is what they did here with their baggage doors. It's another one of those imperceptible updates because you see double slam latches. You see the magnet holdbacks. You see how they had the little ears where if you want to put a gas strut on so it doesn't fall on your head on a windy day, you know, you could do that. And that's all what they had before. What you don't realize is that they actually have a positive self clasping system now. You have to manually tell it, okay, go ahead and fall down. The magnet actually pulls the little pin, grenade pin there, so that it doesn't fall down and whack you on the head. Now, I don't know if you can imagine this, but I'm not exactly the smoothest criminal, and I do tend to bang my head on stuff from time to time, and actually, earlier this week, in a high wind scenario, I got whacked on the head by a baggage door, and it sucks especially when you don't have hair. You don't realize how much hair really soaks up those shocks and jewels. That's kind of why I'm wearing a hat right now. I got a freaking goose egg on my head to beat the band. Um, we've got not just a wide door, but a tall door. It's six and a half foot tall. That's a residential size door, basically. Another cool little thing here, you're seeing this on Cougars and all your Montanas, the screen assist bar. So this is the screen door handle, but you can also use it to like pull the door shut so you're not ripping those panels off. And of course, we have the David Blaine magic stairs. They defy gravity. It's also just really nice to you know, blow out your rotator cuff, flipping them up and down. Now, uh, you'll have a better angle on it from the other side, but the tires there, that is another easily missed and highly underappreciated update, I think. They have upgraded these to, uh, they're still saloons. They're 75 mile an hour rated. Uh, they are. They actually have a, a longer warranty than Goodyear Endurance tires. They're about the only thing I've ever seen that really stands up to a Goodyear. Um, but they're now G-rated. They just bulked up the tires, even though they were perfectly fine and within all safety standards. Montana said, we don't want to just meet the standard. We want to exceed it. And we want to do it every time, not just on the fancy stuff. If it says Montana, we want to know that you're riding on the best sneakers there are. We have ourselves a 3,000 pound towing hitch with a 300 pound tongue weight right there, or it could just be a bike rack. With the shadows coming off that, it's definitely easy to miss. We're all prepped and ready if you wanna go for a full on observation camera suite. And look at the gleam and the gloss on this skin. If for some reason your mirror fogs up in the morning, there's an above average chance you could come out here and floss your teeth, although I would recommend putting on pants before you do that just to, uh, you know, the, the neighbors would certainly <coughs> appreciate it. Uh, listen, they say that you learn best through experience. I'm just going to say maybe you can learn from mine, and I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> the road armor suspension package there and pin box combo, mind you. If you're not familiar with those, they, they don't just reduce shocks and jolts. They, uh, they, they prevent them is, is kind of what it ha happens there. So the more you tow this RV, and especially being the smallest, lightest Montana, I think towing and going is going to be a big aspect of the decision-making process on this one. It will, I think, really help all like the cabinetry and all that good stuff hold together because it's just not getting jarred around, you know what I mean? It's not like gonna be riding on a washer board. 
Now, of course, we have that fully enclosed privatized docking center there. And if you look over here, you're gonna see a simple side mount solar prep plug, little Zamp prep plug right there, um, right above the uh, key TV and beside the full outside shower. Now, we're gonna get up on the roof and you're going to see that these are not just side solar prepped. They're not just roof solar prepped. They are also uh, actually standard roof solar equipped. Now, what we're looking at today will end up being the most basic package they have, but uh, they do have some more advanced solar packages. If what you're looking for is to really spend some time off grid, or if you're just looking to do some mooch docking on occasion, you can really outfit this appropriately. And you might be saying, what in tar nation's mooch docking? It's just kind of a little tongue in cheek phrase. Like if you're parked in someone's driveway and just have like a generic extension cord giving you uh, like you have your, your RV's power like cut down to a 15 amp household adapter. That's called mooch docking. One of the more advanced solar packages that you can get on this uh, comes with a 3000 watt hybrid inverter. So what it'll do is when you're not really using everything, the battery uh, will just be charging from the household power come in. But if you wanna kick on your air conditioners, that hybrid inverter will supplement the household power coming in with the battery power that you have stored on the RV to give you full function of the coach. It's, it's a really cool thing. The 2000, or nope, 200 watt solar flex package we're looking at though is still inverter prepped. We talked about the outlets inside and it does come with a 15 amp Victron charge controller. And I really like to specify the Victron part of that because if you talk to anybody who knows a lot about solar, it, one thing that nearly everybody agrees about is Victron makes just about the best components you can possibly get out there. So hats off to Keystone. Not, they could have found a cheaper option. They really went with a higher grade option. And one of the cool aspects of that is uh, if you want to, you could go up to 400 watts on this, add an inverter and have a pretty decent off-grid package. Um, but, uh, oh, sorry, my train of thought just went off the rails. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> oh, it's lithium compatible, which not every charge controller is. So if you are gonna be serious about getting off-grid, that newer, bigger double battery box that you saw in there, which can fit two batteries, uh, you're gonna be real glad you got the better controller built into this thing. And then of course up top here, we've got all the things you expect on a luxury fifth wheel. You've got uh, obviously a walkable roof. Actually, these have walkable slides as well. Truth be told, a lot of things have those. Just nobody talks about it because even though I know it's walkable, man, I just don't feel like I'm gonna take my pandemic poundage on this thing. It just don't feel right. <laughs> But uh, we've got um, roof attic vents in here. So the roof construction could basically turn into an oven. Like you don't think about it, but in home construction, that area has to be vented so that you get heat buildup out of there because you could actually just like start a fire basically. It could be a hazard. That's not code on RVs, but Montana still does it. A lot of your nicer brands do it, but it's an extra little thing I like to point out just because not everybody gets on the roof and shows you around like we do. And then obviously you got the various Solar Flex packages. We're looking at the Solar Flex 200 right here, but there's also a, uh, a 400 and a 600 package. The 400 and 600, depending on how invested you want to get, you can actually bulk those up to uh, 1200 watts of uh, solar if you are so inclined. Uh, you can really create a heck of a robust package on this. And again, those are available right from the factory. And if you need the extra panels, one of the really cool things there is that as an authorized Keystone dealer, we can get those and install those for you without ruining your warranty. That's really cool. That's something Keystone set up that just is not industry standard. So let me know what you think in the comments section. I know that that sofa or the, the traveling access restrictions might be an issue for some people. At the very least, hit the like button on our video if you appreciate that we help smoke that out for you. Um, it, let me know what you like, let me know what you change, and if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. Doesn't cost you nothing, and it sure helps us. And remember folks, we're family owned and operated. We don't do hidden dealer fees. When you're ready, we're ready at Haylet RV. Love to meet you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and see you around the campfire, everyone. What is wrong with me?